My name is Erin, and I work at Acquia, and I have worked there like three and a half years in support, and then the last quarter I've been a technical account manager. And I spend a lot of my time thinking about caching and caching issues and how to identify and resolve like some really weird problems. So um, first I'm just gonna like do like a quick review of some of the differences between Drupal 7 and Drupal 8 and then um, with regard to caching. And then I'm gonna get into two specific types of problems. And my goal with this talk is to show you the method I've developed for trying to troubleshoot these issues so that you can then do it yourself. It should be awesome. Um, and I'm so excited to see so many people. How many, I th how many folks, show your hands, are still in like the Drupal 7 world with caching problems? Okay. And then how many folks are like becoming fluent with the Drupal 8 world of caching? Yeah. Okay. That's cool. That's a good mix. And I like to give it one more minute because I don't know about you, but I am always late getting to sessions. So, except for this one. <laughs> um, so just to kind of cover it briefly, um, Drupal 7 cached an entire page and saved that whole page to the render cache. So if you change something in a block on a page, it wouldn't necessarily update the page, if, especially if you add several caching layers with you know, really good time to live on them. Uh, so what you had to do was do a whole cache clear to regenerate your front page. And that's very resource intensive on the back end. Drupal 8's rad because you can cache a lot of the page but still have like areas like that I have here in the um, red that are you know, dynamic areas for logged in users. So you can update it just for that particular user or you can have like a block I put on the top here, um, see your school, and you need to get out an emergency alert. Uh, you can just use cache tags and clear out the block at the top of your home page and be able to have that everywhere without having to expire your whole cache, which is rad. Um, but it does sometimes result in some issues where things are lingering on the page or things are not showing up the way you expect that can be a little trickier to troubleshoot in Drupal 8 now that we cache all the things. Um, just like best practices, um, if you use cache tags with your views, it's much easier to propagate that out to a CDN, content delivery network. Um, so if you're using Akamai or you're using um, Cloudflare to help deliver some of that static content or the dynamic content faster at the edge layer, um, use cache tags. Um, Enable page caching. Dynamic page cache is awesome because then you can cache the three quarters of the page. Uh, big pipe. If you haven't seen Wim's big pipe talk from a little while ago, you should. It's good. Um, I repeat some of that here, but definitely, definitely set this to as long as you can. Um, and it, you can use Drush to set your max age even further out. Like with Drupal 8 and using the purge module to inval selectively invalidate cache when content's updated, you can set that time to live out to a year. And then when your content editor is updating something on their site and they hit save, then if you're using the purge module, it'll just update that right away, which is a wrap. They're happy, you're happy, your caching is forever, so people are accessing information quickly, it's a wrap. Um, and then I have another talk that I gave specifically on PHP caches. There's opcode ca cache and there's user cache and there's some fiddly PHP specific caches. That's a different talk, but check that out too. So let's get into the interesting problems because they're kind of fun. Um, we had a client of UC Davis and they had this persistent issue on their alumni profile page and their news page. So this was like dynamic page generated through views where some of the profiles would show up properly. They would be styled and you would see the article tag around them. And some of them would show up completely unstyled. 
just text. And that ha would have field tagging around it. And they couldn't figure out why. And we couldn't figure out why for a long time. Um, this is an interesting problem because it only occur occasionally. Uh, so we'd have to try an intervention and then wait for whatever mystery occurrence was making all the styling go away. Um, it was persistent and it was, um, even though this was a university site, it was large multi-site, so a lot, of, um, a lot of different sites running off the same code base. The other sites on the code base were fine. So it was something specific to this site. We're like, hmm, okay, what could it be? Um, so one of the things that we use a lot to learn about what your caching area layers are, and anybody can do it, and this is just on the Acquia site, is use curl. And you can take a look at which items are a cache hit. Oh. So there's a Drupal cache hit. Um, and then which items are in Drupal and which items are, like we use varnish, so this would be a varnish cache hit. Or it could be for this site uses Cloudflare. It could be a Cloudflare cache hit. Um, it can be, this ca X cache hit can be whatever, it can be updated by whatever caching la layer is closest to you and in some cases that's varnish, and in some cases, if you have a WAF or you have a CDN, that's the one immediately close to you. Both should respect the max age. Um, and then if you are using Cl Cloudflare, they have a CF Ray ID, which you can use to contact Cloudflare and get more information about what's in the header and what's in the cache. Um, for us, this is pretty juicy, because we're like, okay, so if it's a Drupal cache miss, we're not hitting the render cache. This is a Drupal cache hit. There is a cached item. Where it, it kind of tells you which layers of your cache you're seeing data from. Um, sometimes you need to get information, you know, with Drupal 8, you can cache authenticated sessions, right? So sometimes you need to be able to use curl on an authenticated session. And um, in w which case, this is like a really handy method for getting that around that. You can grab the session IT and ID and attach it to your curl and be able to see where the cache layers are. Um, and this is just kind of an example, but what I was talking about before, here's your Drupal 8 site on whatever stack that looks like. Um, your Drupal 8 can cache to the database, uh, memcache or Redis, just depending on where you're hosted. Um, we use Varnish at um, Acquia on load balancers. So we strongly advise you to cache as much in Varnish as possible because it pushes the content out quickly. And then that can be picked up by a CDN um, like Cloudflare or um, we also encourage you to use web WAF or web application firewall. Um, it's nice to have that ready in advance in case you need it. So this is like what you could be dealing with. Now, when you're trying to figure out something that's stale content or something content that's not rendering as expected, you're using your curl, trying to figure out, okay, so is it picking it up from this layer or this layer? Or is it all the way, is it a Drupal cache hit? Is it all the way in the Drupal in the database? Or memcache? So what I advise people to do is to simplify. Um, and a quick way of doing that without actually making any architectural changes at all is just use a cache busting string. And as you can see, it's well, the cache busting string will miss these outer cache layers, get right to the Drupal site. It's handy. Um, another way of doing like a, trying to figure out where the problem is in the caching layer, and one that we use to actually troubleshoot this problem is to use Drush CC. You can still Drush clear cache in Drupal 8. Um, and if you do it kind of systematically and selectively, it can help you reveal like where exactly the caching problem is. Is it in the theme registry? Um, usually it's gonna be right here in render. And that's what happened in this case. We've cleared UCC to selectively clear render cache, and the 
unstyled content immediately was updated and was styled. And we're like, okay, that tells us that it's Drupal and it's in the render table. So just to kind of restate or say in a different way, if your normal caching layers look like this and you're having trouble figuring out where the problem is occurring that you're troubleshooting, simplify. Get it right down to either load balancer or if you can, work locally and just check on Drupal 8, a copy of the code in the database and the files. Um, you can also temporarily disable memcache or Redis if you're using that. Um, if you're finding that Drush clear cache render, if you're flushing just the render array and you're just caching to the database, um, that tells you that you can search, use SQL, and search the database render table and see what you can see. See if you can detect where that faulty data is coming in. Um, for this specific one, because it had to do with styling, we also enabled twig debugging, which was super handy for helping us understand uh, what the formatting was. Um, obviously, after you're done troubleshooting, please remember to re-enable all your cache layers. <laughs> We've had some sites where they did some really great troubleshooting, discovered a problem, fixed it, and then forgot to put things back when they're like, why is my site down during a huge load event? So please remember to check that back. So going back to my example here, what we did is um, we simplified. We took it just down to the Drupal database. We turn off memcache. We turn off external cache just for the site. We went to the article and then we said, okay, let's look and see if we can find where this event occurred to have this unstyled content. And we use this um, select query. Oh, I keep wanting to select things. But we use this query to help us figure out where, which teaser was faulty. So we went through and we found that um, this one, that was the faulty one, um, like when it was showing up in the cache as unstyled content, was using fields for the theme. And this one that was correct was using the node teaser for the theme. Like, hmm. What we found then, we had a hunch. Okay, because sometimes you get there, you find the evidence and then you're like, how could this be? So we took a look at the view settings for both of these and we found that this was using, the regular article was styling the default teaser and the RSS field was also using the default teaser. We're like, oh, okay, so this is the same. So when you went to the RSS feed, or when anybody accessed the RSS feed for that page, it saved it in the cache render table looking like this, unstyled, unstyled with fields. And then when we cleared that out, it went back to normal. And when we accessed it as a news article first, it went back to normal. And that's because for that default teaser view, it isn't aware of cache contacts. And that's a known Drupal bug. It's been there for a little while. In fact, I was checking it right before the talk. I'm like, did they fix it? They fixed a lot of the, these issues. But this particular one is still not fixed. So what I recommend is that you create a display mode. If you're going to build um, like a styled list and use it on your sites, a good practice is to build a display mode for this view or for any custom views and not use the default teaser. It just was funny to me because everybody uses the default. Um, but the, uh, the people working on this are thinking, oh, the default teaser is an example that people can use for styling. Um, when in reality, what do you do when you're setting up the site? Or a lot of people just accept the default. So like, hey, this must work. And then they apply the theme styling to the defaults, not realizing that the default is unaware of the cache contacts. So that's my big, like, this was neat. So you can solve it in two ways. You can um, 
create a custom display mode, I think that's the easiest. Um, you don't want to end up with a bazillion of display modes for views, but it is kind of nice. And Umami has an example of there's a few of them that are styled out. Um, or you could um, just change this, right? You can use change the format that you're using from the default. So there's two ways to avoid that in the future. Um, so this is just kind of like a thing that we run into all the time at Acquia that we'd love to like share is um, just double check. It's like this by default, but absolutely check your views. This is in the edit thing. And just make sure that when you're caching, you're using tag-based caching so it can be picked up by your CDN layer. And even if you don't have a CDN, tag-based caching works really well. Okay. So this is problem number two. And I'm, this is kind of like an example, and this used to happen before Drupal 8.5. This used to happen a lot with um, translated sites. Uh, there was a bug in the redir redirects for multilingual sites that got resolved in 8.5 that would cause the same problem. But this is kind of the symptom. The symptom is, I've been working on this site, I have this block. I know it should be there on this site. Usually this is the one you get with screenshots and a bunch of arrows and it's kind of the example I have here. Like, where did my block go? Um, it should be showing up in some contexts and not in others. Um, this is where I'm gonna do a little like switch because this is not actually the site that I'm talking about, but, um, but this problem of where did my block go or my content is unexpectedly missing actually crops up a lot. So there's a kind of, Similar to the kind of troubleshooting we did before, there's a pretty straightforward method of troubleshooting these two. Um, first is, you know, make sure that you've double checked all the basic stuff. Like it should be showing up in the block settings and that your visibility is set. So we ran into a lot of that where the block disappears, but it's just really simple Drupal 8 settings. Um, then start making notes. Is there a difference in behavior for authenticated users, users who've logged into your site, or anonymous users? Uh, because you can hit different caching layers, right? You need to kind of double check. Is, it, is the block disappearing on certain pages for authenticated users? Or maybe authenticated users are always seeing the block and just anonymous users can't see it. Uh, does clearing crash? Uh, does Drush CR fix it? Or uh, can you be more specific with that? Does Drush CC and clearing render cache fix it? Uh, is there a custom module? Uh, that, you know, custom modules are awesome ways of adding functionality to your site. But every once in a while, you can, you know, make an assumption with your programming that causes Drupal 8 to work unexpectedly. And in this one, like spoiler alert, we're absolutely talking about a custom module. Um, and then also use curl, get an idea of what are the caching layers that are between you, your point of looking at it, and the Drupal. Um, so in this site, our customer made a custom module sales tool that was just disappear for site visitors. Authenticated visitors would visit one page, um, that has the block and it's there. They go to a different page, related sense of content, they come and it's there. They go to the third page that isn't supposed to have the block and the block disappears. Then they go back to the first page that has supposed to have the block and the block is still missing. For the rest of their session, that, that sales tools block is made missing. And that is affecting all the anonymous users too. Uh, in this case, it was nice because we were able to download the code and database to a local environment. And when caching was disabled, the block always behaved as it was expected. Um, which is fine, but disabling caching is really not a solution in production. Really not a solution in production. <laughs> so we had to figure out this problem and resolve it. Um, so what we did to kind of tra tra track this down 
is work with a local copy and, I'll, and then search cache render and take a look and see what was happening. So when we accessed the page that has the block and the block's appearing, we had this cool like cache redirect line in cache render. Um, when we visited then in the same session, visited a page that where the block's not supposed to appear, we found that the cache render, the redirect line had disappeared and it was replaced by this like markup string that was the zero value length. We're like, that's pretty strange. It should have something. It shouldn't just have a placeholder of zero. So we tried like a few other ways of testing, clearing cache in between, and we found that this behavior was consistent. Like we really needed the cache redirect line to be there to be able to see the block. So then we looked through the code, right? And we rolled out Drupal 8, and we found this piece of custom, this custom module that is, has this logic to it. Hide the block if no links are to be displayed. Like, wait a second. That's where this markup with the zero value is coming from. So my coworker put together some example code of how to fix it. So this is just kind of example code of how you would potentially fix it. And then when we change this code in this particular custom module, um, then when we access the page again, we were able to see this cache redirect was still there as it was supposed to be, and the block started appearing reliably. So that's kind of like a really quick kind of overview of, hey, you know, double check your modules, if the block is coming from a custom module, just double check the logic or disable the module temporarily and see if you know the problem goes away. You can't do it actually because on this example, because this module is building the block, you're trying to troubleshoot. Um, but then you know, change your coding strategy, and that might resolve the thing. So when I submitted the talk. There were still outstanding multilingual issues that would make ca cached multilingual content just sort of disappear. But good news is this part of this talk is really short now because a lot of those have been resolved. There have been some great work on that. So it's awesome. Um, there are a couple that I am aware of. This browser language detection isn't cache aware is one that's currently active. Um, and then this one I thought I'd mention, uh, just because it was so baffling for people. People shouldn't be using Drupal 8.5 anymore. Hopefully they're using a newer version. Uh, but if they are using an earlier version than that and they're finding that translated content is just sort of disappearing, it might be this bug. Um, and really that was like a, a redirect that was returning a 403. And so, but it was baffling because suddenly translated content would just disappear. Um, and then, because I work at Acrea, this is a saying we have it's either cash or cash. So, when you're in production and you have, you know, 10 billion of your closest, 10,000 of your closest friends all visiting your site all at the same time, you can use your caching layers or you can end up paying more money in hardware the way it goes. We prefer people use caching layers. And this is just kind of an example of um, one of my current clients, they're using a decoupled application and they're using Cloudflare and Akamai. They're actually using it in two places here and then in front of Drupal 8 for their API also. But um, this can be a little complicated to try to troubleshoot, but it's kind of I'm finding that this kind of setup is kind of more and more standard, so I thought I'd share it. It's good. So thank you very much. This is awesome having a packed room. Please ask questions. I have a lot to share, so. So would you recommend installing something like Views Custom uh, cache tags, because what I'm finding is that uh, when debugging cache tags, all views that use content as the base uh -huh. have node list. Right. So, <laughs> of course, adding content 
basically any time you add content, update, delete, all of those views are now cleared. So would that be the recommended version you would, you would suggest or is there a different way you would approach that? I usually end up advising people to use Purge um, with whatever helper uh, module works with Purge that works with your um, hosting. You know, like there's an Acquia Purge that works with the module that Purge module that specifically talks to um, does a main request to the our varnish layers, but um, there are other Purge kind of bolt-ins. Um, that will send a ban request, which is a lot less resource intensive, and it will still update all the views, though. So taking the like varnish out of the equation and just uh -huh. sticking strictly with Drupal 8. Uh -huh. um, so I, I understand purge, but my guess, my question is really, I, taking that out, would uh -huh. you recommend something else to take away the node list tag? Oh, um, I mean, you could try it. See what works best for your particular application. I haven't noticed it being like so resource intensive that it's showed up on my, um, like I think about that. Even though you're updating everything, it is kind of like a minimal tax still on performance. Okay. Hello. Hi there. So uh, based on this case study, um, Drupal comes with um, page cache, dynamic page cache, and big pipe. Uh -huh. So do you guys have all three of those turned on or just dynamic Turn on page all the pipe? caching things. Turn on all three of those? Yeah. Check out Wim's talk about mm -hmm. big pipe. It's really good and it explains how, how they all work together. Okay. Um, that was listed in the slide, right? I think yeah. you pointed out. And then my second question is, um, you have um, Cloudflare, then you uh -huh. have Varnish, and obviously you have authenticated users in uh -huh. this case study. So um, I'm assuming that the, um, the Cloudflare and the Varnish was not caching those authenticated users and you were relying on big pipe. Actually, they will, if you have a dynamic page cache, mm -hmm. then parts of the page will be cached in Varnish and picked up by Cloudflare too. Parts of the page? Yeah, because um, the way that Drupal builds the page in Drupal 8, it's not trying to render or cache the entire page. Right, right. It kind of builds it up so that you can have cached co content for authenticated users, especially if you're using dynamic page cache or big pipe. Right. That um, will be cached in Varnish and um, Cloudflare. Right. And then when, it's only dynamically generating like the custom. Um, right. So you're saying a page would be partially cached in Varnish because Varnish is doing page cache, right? Right. So you have a partial page cache. Yeah. This is kind of interesting to it's me. It's kind of neat. It works pretty well, too. How that would work. Yeah. Because if it's the same page uh, for a different, uh, say, student, uh -huh. uh, then it must have a different variation of that page because it's only one page, but it's just customized for that, right. for that student to be in Varnish. How would Varnish so understand that? So if you're that? using Big Pipe too, it'll load all that cache content and then we'll load the dynamic areas. Live. Right, I understand the Big yeah. Pipe part. The part that I'm not seeing is how is Varnish handling if it's just a page so cache. Play, yeah, it's more tool. more easier to see when you're looking at the live site and you use the curl and it'll show you which caching layers are picking out. Okay, thanks. Hi, this might Hi be there. a stupid question, but uh, we have memcache installed, you know, uh -huh. on our Aquia sites. Uh -huh. And I'm wondering if um, internal page cache and dynamic page cache and memcache, you know, are those three separate components or yes. having memcache would actually, in you know, like we don't have to use internal page cache anymore because we have memcache now? You, they work differently. So memcache, what it does is it caches requests that you would normally, you would otherwise be sending to the database. Mm -hmm. Redis kind of works the same way. So instead of being like a, f a cache, whereas the page cache is usually in here, the layers before you get to Drupal. I see. Okay. Thank so, you. You're welcome. That oh, I like that question. It was good. Thank you. <laughs> and um, just a reminder, we have stickers, so please take some. Thanks. One more question? 
Yeah. Um, you talked a little bit about custom blocks and having dynamic content in the page and needing to set cache tags for that. We are running into that problem. Mm -hmm. Where do you set the cache tags? Is that something that you're doing in the configuration and purge? Uh, where cache tags are usually enabled by default. So um, in Drupal 8, and then also I showed you the setting in views. Um, so if you look at the header, if you curl and ha include the dash H for the header information, it'll usually list out the cache tags that it's using. And looking at that list will help you better understand exactly what has the cache tag associated and what doesn't. Okay, because we're only seeing it on, a, on custom block. I mean, everything else we have, we, we're using purge, uh -huh. um, we're using varnish. It's, it's only with the custom blocks that this seems to be coming up. Okay, yeah. So, um, hmm. That's where you start to kind of get fiddly, like into the code and try to see whether um, that's actually engaged, you know, happening before you engage, like the Drupal cache context or the caching system, or maybe you're like missing a little piece of logic that allows it to do that. Um, we so. know it's happening in Drupal. I'm You're sorry. like, <laughs> I just, we just don't know how to fix it. How to fix it, yeah. Yep. Okay. Um, so the other thing would be to look at a module that's caching really well on your site and compare how it works with your custom module to see. Um, but I would, I would love to know more about your problem, so follow up with me okay. later. Hey. So I have two questions. I guess the first one is, what benefit do you get out of having multiple CDNs set up on the same, I guess, project? Um, so not. it depends on what you're using your CDN for. Um, we have some customers that are using their CDN to help deliver the site quicker to the edge, right? Um, if your site's hosted in the US and some of your consumers are in China. It makes sense to use a CDN to push that to China. Or, you know, uh, we have some customers in Singapore who have, um, you know, different places in the, the globe where they need to get the images and the content to. So you can use that. Um, and the other purpose of a CDN can sometimes be to help keep your site up um, in perceived as up when you're doing work on the back end. Yeah, I, I just know that you would but have this to set is, up purges for, for both of those CDNs. Yeah, no, way. it gets complicated. Yeah. You're only doing it usually if you need to. And usually, this is just my slide. It has a couple of examples. But uh, usually, you stick to one solution or another. OK, and then my other question is, so I know Akamai specifically has limits on how many cash tags they can process mm -hmm. per hour. Mm -hmm. um, so in terms of like uh, for your customer facing views and that kind of stuff, I understand using cash tags is uh, it's kind of a must, right? Yeah. But for sort of your admin UI stuff, would your recommendation be to not use cash tags? Um, if you're like kind of pushing up on that limit? Yeah. You could, you know, disable some of them if you're getting close to that limit. Okay. Yeah. Okay. If you're hitting the point where you're hitting that limit, too, um, you can also use something like Purge to, um, the other thing that Purge does is it compresses the cache tags, so it's not so much, you know, if you, it's a shorter thing, so well, if you yeah. have a character so limit. We'll, we definitely filter out. Um, so we have config read only enabled, so there's right. no reason to be purging config, but it'll still send those cache tags. It'll so still we filter send those them. out. Yeah. Um, and we, we, we're trying what we can to reduce it, but it's also just not knowing exactly what what is getting purged. But you know, we would have 500 cache tags per request right. that would go up, and, and you know, we That's had to filter too many. it. Yeah, try to filter it and get it down or use um, modules that are a little less it's hard because then you're you're doing a different kind of optimization instead of a caching optimization it's tricky
Hey, I have a question for uh, web services caching. Uh -huh. uh, so we use Acquia Content Hub to publish content, uh -huh. meaning that every time when we publish content or update content, um, it enumerates all the data and sends to the Content Hub. Right. Uh, it typically is fine when we first publish the content. It enumerates pro uh, correctly to the Content Hub. Uh -huh. But when we update the content, uh, more often than not, we see the content is actually cached, oh. which means that you know even the content we see uh, being updated on the title on the side, we can see the change, mm -hmm. but we can't really see that change reflected in the content hub. Gotcha. So, what's your recommendation for that kind of caching? So, on the content, you mean like your master site where you're. Sure, yeah. yeah, so any size that you publish the content to Content Hub. Right. I would put in um, a support ticket on that, uh, just because. So I, I worked with the Aqua TAM team, and uh -huh. they said uh, one of the 